as he's arranged for a team of Russian gymnasts to uh, visit the university while on their tour. That's your bad, please. What does that mean? It means I love you. But it was my fault. I was the one who... And furthermore, you're not to see the young lady again. Come on, Hart, you're part of the study group. Hey, shut up, Bill. I'll be there if I can. Tanya! The study of law is something new and unfamiliar to most of you. Unlike any other schooling that you have ever known before. First years are hard years. Much more than we know. With good friends to love us, we'll build every road. Stay open to all things unknown and new. And one day we'll all say, Hey, look, we've come through the first year. You teach yourselves the law, but I train your mind. You come in here with a skull full of mush, and if you survive, you leave thinking like a lawyer. Reserved? This when can you reserve the whole jam? A special ruling, just for the next few days, from the dean's office. Nobody told us about it. It's posted outside. Now, I'd appreciate your cooperation on this, okay? You got it. So. You're starting to get my bod in shape, too. Imagine what it looked like before it was in shape. <laughs> so what are you supposed to reserving the gym for? For the entire Bell family. <laughs> I think that's your answer, Hart. Russians. Looks like the Soviet gymnastics team. Yeah, I heard they were on tour. I didn't know they were coming here. Are you sure there's an, um, some chance that we could watch them for just a little while? I'm sorry, boys, but rules are rules. See you later. You look tough. Actually, Russ, Va, three, Chitiri. Четыре. Раз, два, три, четыре. Раз, два, три, четыре. Раз. Why the tight security over a bunch of Russian gymnasts? Don't you remember the Olympics in Munich, Bill? Shame that even sports have gotten political. Right. All we need now is an incident here. What are they doing here anyway? I read an article that said they're on a goodwill tour. Well, the Russians aren't our problem, man. Professor Justin is. How much longer are we going to be stuck with that guy anyway? Kingsfield said he'd be on that case in London for a month. At least we're halfway through with him. What do you got against Justin? The guy's tough. Where's in Kingsfield? Kingsfield I'm used to. That guy worries me. And there can be no mistaking the language and intent of paragraph 8 sub D. Therefore, you are on notice that in the event of failure to comply with all terms of the contract by the stipulated date, I shall begin recovery proceedings with an additional claim for triple damages, very truly yours. And I would like that to be out this afternoon. Professor Justin, please, not so fast. Sorry, Mrs. Nottingham, aren't you finished? Uh, 
with an additional claim for, uh, uh, for... Triple damages. Oh. Ready? Yes, but, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Nottingham. If this is too much for you, uh, I'm sure we can find some help. No. No, I'll manage. Yes? Ah, uh, Dean Rutherford, come in, come in. Am I interrupting? No, no, not at all. That's all for now, Mrs. Nottingham. Thank you. You know, it's unusual not to find Mrs. Nottingham barring the door. <laughs> well, now, is this uh, visit personal or official? Oh, a bit of both, I suppose. How are you finding the classes, Mark? No different than when I was a student. The University and Kingsfield march on. Each to the sound of a different drummer sometimes, I'm afraid. Well, knowing Kingsfield, what else could you expect? You're doing a good job, Mark. Well, I try to wear the crown, but I'm sure that Mrs. Nottingham doesn't believe it fits at all. Naturally. I don't know how much Charles has told you, but uh, you'll have to do more than handle his classes. Aha. Uh -huh. The official part of the call, hmm? As he's arranged for a team of Russian gymnasts to uh, visit the university, while on their tour. Yes, he did mention that. Struck me as rather odd. In all the years that I've known him, he's never cared for anything more athletic than chess. Now, gymnastics? Now, it goes beyond that. He didn't tell me very much, but I know he has hopes for some kind of cultural exchange, free and open discussion of ideas among the young people to promote better understanding between the nations. Sounds like Kingsfield. The team has arrived already. And someone from the Russian legation will be arriving later this afternoon. Would that be uh, Novikov? Nikolai Novikov. He's an old friend of Charles. Do you know him? No, only casually. I met him uh, two or three times with Kingsfield, but I haven't seen him for well, at least two years. Well, uh, since Charles isn't here, I'll be counting on you to act as his host. I'll do my best. Thank you, Mark. Are you on your way to work? Yes, ma'am. Well, how would you like to walk me to the library? Oh, that sounds very exciting. Mm, an orgy of constitutional law. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, please. What's going on? That's a visiting Russian gymnast team. They've taken over the top floor. Hi. Thank you. Pleasure. Hart, do you know her? No. Not yet. Oh. Nazdarovia. Here's to your visit, Mr. Novikov. Ah. It has been a long time. And you have a look of a man who has prospered. Well, I stopped teaching a couple of years ago. I have my own firm now. Oh, um, then how it is you're here? Well, Kingsfield asked me to take over for him while he was gone, and, uh, well, it seemed like a pretty good idea, you know, just sort of keep my hand in. Mm, Charles wouldn't have us any man. He must respect your ability. Well, it was flattering, certainly. But I want to hear more about this visit by your team. Oh, Charles and I, we both felt it would be a great opportunity for our young people to observe the teaching method at your university. Who knows, it might help the future relations between our countries. And that's an excellent thought. But if you don't mind my saying so, why not carry it further? How? Have a real exchange of ideas, not just observation. Let the members of your team participate freely in classroom discussion. Well, we need not plan to go as far as that. Come on now, you're not afraid, are you, Nikolai? <laughs> afraid? It is conceivable that we can show your system to be inferior to ours. Fair enough. I'll risk it if you will. My friend, I don't see a Russian is suspicious. But after he shakes hands, he always counts his fingers. Are you counting? Very carefully.
And now binding agreement. The case of green versus amalgamated copper. Mr. Hart. Yes, sir. The view to the back is distracting, isn't it? All right, Mr. Hart, once more with feeling. Green versus amalgamated copper. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the plaintiff Green brought suit against a company for failure to um, deliver a shipment of copper tubing according to a schedule specified in its contract. Uh, in its defense, the company claimed that it, uh, it was subject to an emergency order and a company in contract from U.S. Army ordinance um, which superseded any contract with a private firm. And Green contended that he had a binding agreement which should not be broken. Excuse me, Mr. Hart. Um, I believe one of our guests would like to comment, yes? If I may speak, please? Yes, of course. A contract between two parties is binding agreement. This is true, unless interests of state are involved. Your opinion, Mr. Hart? Uh, I'm sorry, miss, but the government had no party in this action. It had to be. Copper is a vital metal necessary for the welfare of the state. Therefore, the state automatically becomes primary party. Uh, I, I'm sorry, you, you don't understand. See, the government's contract with the uh, company was... The company are people, no? No. Ah, uh, yes. Well, then how can there be a contract between the state and the people that is wasteful, inefficient? Um, sir, we're straying from the point. Yes, but it's an area worth talking about some other time. The differences between nations in their interpretations of the law. Thank you both. Before we stop, I would like to thank our guests for their attention and participation. I wish Professor Kingsfield could have been here to see the free exchange of ideas. He would have enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, I don't want to stop you. I want to keep the ball rolling. I, I'd like to see us get involved uh, socially to continue this exchange of ideas. I suggest that each member of this class act as individual hosts for the members of the Russian team during their stay here. Is that all right with you, Mr. Novikov? Good, then let's have some volunteers. Uh, Ms. Logan, Mr. Simpson, Ms. Jackson, Mr. Hart. You have taken not only my fingers, you have taken the hand. Oh, come on, Nikolai, we're not playing Dostoevsky. The class worked well, everybody was enthusiastic. So I got carried away a little, an impulse, so what? I understand, perhaps you're right. But I must answer to my superior for a team, for, for their activities and for what may happen to them. So they get together, what do you think's going to happen? Nothing I trust, but it wasn't the way Charles and I planned it. Well, Charles is not here, Nikolai. I am. Sorry. Come on, Logan, what do you say? We can all go out together and have a really wonderful time. And why all this sudden interest in togetherness? Well, I thought that since the scoring the Russian gym team is uh, supposed to be a cultural experience, if we were to go together, we would double that experience. Mm -hmm. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I'm chaperoning Tanya Karaschinka. It's pronounced Karachinska. Oh, you have been doing your homework. Come on, Logan. <laughs> Besides, the guy I'm escorting is very good looking, Ivan. Yes, he is. And so is Tanya. It's not bad, not bad. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, three cheeseburgers, two hamburgers, french fries, onion rings, and three colas. Right. You know, Logan and Hart shouldn't be spending time away from the study group to play tour guides. Logan thought it would be an interesting cultural experience. And, uh, Hart, uh, I don't know. Why are you so negative, Bell? It just bugs me, that's all. Why? Why should we go out of our way to please people who are totally opposed to our way of life? It's what they represent that gets me. It's a system where nobody owns anything and everybody owns everything. The individual owes everything to the state. Now, how are you gonna get rich like that? <laughs> I see Mr. Bell worships the almighty dollar. That's right, it's the American way. And you're the perfect example of it. What do you mean by that? 
Well, I'm sure none of the Fords are lacking any of the comforts of home. No, but it wasn't always that way. I'm sure my great-great-great-grandfather worked very hard for his money. <laughs> At least he got to keep it in the family. You can't generalize about people, Bell. Like saying Americans are all Fords or, uh, Bells. <laughs> 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 hey, people! Hey, be careful what to say. The Russians are coming. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Tanya, Yvonne, this is Anderson, Bell, and Ford. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> Let me get some chairs. How do you do? Let me get some chairs. All right. Uh, listen, are you hungry? I'm not, thanks. We have eaten already. Thank you. But Tia has us on a very strict diet. Well, well, leave something to drink. Okay. Okay, great. I'll go get it. I'm hungry. Oh, So, how do you like America so far? Very much. This is very nice country. Will you be here long? Tour will be here for one month. Then we return home to prepare for Olympics. These two are the Russian hope for the Olympic gold medal. You are very kind, but we all are part of a team. We work together as one. Like our study group. <laughs> you decide to work after all? No, I just said I'd give you a hand with this. Oh, uh, yeah, and save yourself a couple of bucks, huh? Four beers, two dollars. Well, I thought this could be in the house. You know, help promote international goodwill. What is this, the United Nations or something? <laughs> okay, I got it, I got it. Forget it. Thanks, <laughs> Ernie. Here you go, Ivan. 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 <laughs> Hart, can I ask you something? Sure. Uh, Tanya is very beautiful, no? Yes, she, she is, and very intelligent. You have a fondness for her, I think. I, I see it when you talk to her. Hey, does it show? She likes you, too. <laughs> does she? Oh, yes, she has told me. She did? Yes. Ivan, are you, are you up to something? <laughs> I think Logan is very nice. Yeah? You are very nice, too. I, I enjoy your company, but not for the whole evening, you understand. <laughs> I do understand, but listen, what about the rules? I mean, they said fellas with the fellas and girls with the girls. Even we have learned to change the rules when it is necessary. <laughs> bend them a little? Uh, bend, I don't understand this. That's okay, we understand each other, right? Da. Da. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And what's that Russian toast? Nazdarovia. Well, Nazdarovia. Tanya, have you ever heard of a game called pinball? No. It is a great American game. Can I show it to you? It's a shark. <laughs> Listen, the reason I pulled you over here is because I'd love to take a walk with you and show you the campus. But it is very late. I know. But I just thought I could walk you back to the dorm. Okay, I will go to Logan. No need to. I'll see you back there. It was very rude of us to leave our friends without telling them. Are you sorry? But it's just so difficult to get a chance to see you alone. I mean, Vasily's aware of every move you make. He's very strict about training. It doesn't seem to bother you. Well, it's good for the team, my country. Gymnastics mean a lot to you, don't they? It has been a part of my life since I was very young. We start training at a very early age. And those of us who show promise uh, are sent to a special school. It is not so here. Uh, no, it's, it's pretty much up to the individual here. We too have a choice, but athletics shows strength and discipline to an individual. So we are not only encouraged by our parents, but by the state to commit our lives to hard work. Surely you, more than anybody, can understand that. Logan told me you are very bright and committed to becoming a good lawyer. Did you say I was bright? Uh, I, uh, I work hard, that's all. You are very modest. Well, listen, how do you do it? I mean, how do you manage to train and go to law school at the same time? Well, when you want something badly enough, you will find the time. I have only one more year until the Olympics. And then I am finished. Already there are many 
many young Russian girls who are good enough to take my place now. Is that right? It's incredible. Uh, listen. Do you have a friend back home? Of course, many. No, I mean, uh, I mean like a boyfriend. I have many friends who are boys. <laughs> listen, I, I... I really had a good time spending this, this, this little time alone with you. Really. So did I. Because any chance we might get to do it again. Perhaps. I have to train very early in the morning. Okay. I thought it was very clear to all of you when you volunteered to be escorts for the Russians. I don't understand what you mean, Professor Justin. Mr. Hart, when I said socially, personally, I did not mean... Sir, the only thing we did was... The Russian coach has given me the details, Mr. Hart. Now, both of you knew the rules regarding fraternizing with the team. But, sir, we didn't think it would do any harm. Under any other circumstances, certainly not. But I assured Mr. Novikov that there would be no problems accomplishing our goals, a lesson in Soviet-American relations. But, sir, there was nothing to be... Mr. Hart, that's enough. I am relieving you and Miss Logan as escorts. Oh, and, Mr. Hart, you will refrain from seeing Tanya Karachinska except in the classroom situation. Now, is that clear? That's all. Do you wish anything? Uh, yes, I'd just like to speak to Tanya for Our me. training is very intense. I cannot permit distractions. No, this would just be... You don't understand. The training of an athlete requires absolute concentration and dedication. Uh, the mind and the body has to work at one. If the mind or the body gets distracted, the body will not perform. So you see, I cannot permit distractions. Uh, please. All right. Thank you very much. Stoichi! And there are many instances of non-performance due to extenuating circumstances. An example, please, uh, Mr. Anderson. Um, I'll cite Morgan versus Barnswell. Morgan, the plaintiff, brought suit against Barnswell for failure to paint his house within a specified time. Barnswell's defense rested on inclement weather, circumstances beyond his control. But the plaintiff charged that Barnswell should have allowed for that when he guaranteed a completion date. The court found for the defendant. The weather, like divine providence, is beyond a man's control and is therefore definitely an extenuating circumstance. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Or would any of our guests care to comment? The weather, it, it is just as bad in the Soviet People's Republic. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have that in common. All right. Tomorrow, chapters 12 and 13. Thank you. Oh, 
to you later. No, wait a minute. Come on, we haven't had a study group meeting in almost a week. Maybe you don't care, but this guy Justin is a... Okay, Bell, okay, we'll have one this afternoon. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah, sure. Well, now that I don't have to play hostess anymore. Hart, what about you? I'll try. What do you mean you'll try? I'll be there if I can, but don't count on me. Come on, Hart, you're part of the study group. Hey, shut up, Bell, I'll be there if I can. What's the matter? No more international goodwill? Uh, the diplomats are ruining it. You expecting somebody? I'm hoping is more like it. You can hope while you serve these drinks, can't you? Oh, yeah, sure. Bell. Howdy. Bell, look, I am so sorry I blew up at you this afternoon. I Don't worry about it. I know you got problems. Well, I never should have taken it out on you. Don't worry about it. Well, look, uh, Ford and Yvonne are sitting over there. Aren't you going to join them? Maybe later. Okay. Vaso cinco siva ya volasi. I come from Chicago. I vaši glasa. Oh, yes, it gets very cold there, too. <laughs> What's so funny? Gregor tells her how lovely she is, and she speaks of her home in the velvet. <laughs> Can I get you guys anything? No, thank you, James. No, it's fine. Uh, Ivan, Tanya's coming in tonight, isn't she? I'm uh, afraid not, my friend. Vasily is very angry. She has been detained in her room. Hart, I am very sorry about all that has happened. I feel responsible. Please don't worry about it, Ivan. Uh, Ernie, do me a big favor. I take the rest of the night off. Come on, Hart. I've got to get out of here, Ernie. I, I uh, I'm just really tired. Yeah, looks like girl trouble to me. Please, Ernie. Okay, go on, get out of here. Get back at the door, Bill. Yeah. Hey, Bill, come on over. Poor Yvonne must be bored to death talking to just me. Okay. I'm worried about Hart. He's been acting weird. He just went back to the dorm. He is upset because Tanya is not here. But I think I know a way to help him. Ford, do you know the number of the telephone on our floor? Vasily was angry at you. I didn't mean for this to happen. He is true Russian, very hot-tempered. Well, what if he finds you here? He is out. He thinks I'm in my room. Then you can stay? For a little while. I'm so sorry for all the trouble I've caused you. Please do not feel you need to apologize. My mother once told me that one should never feel sorry for something they do not regret. I regret nothing. What 
is your name again? Uh, Willis Bell, like in Liberty Bell. I am Sonia. Bell. That is nice name. Very American. Yours is pretty Russian. Your country I like. You do? Very much. So big. So beautiful. And so happy your people are. It's very nice of you to say that. And you have such good eating, too. You really think so? Oh, yes. The hamburger and the hot dog and the pizza. Why don't we get something to eat right now? Sonia, I checked your room. Tanya's not there. What is she? I do not know. Perhaps she's with your friend. No, she couldn't be, because he's back at the dorm studying. Comrades, you will all say good night and return to quarters. I have to go, Sonia, but uh, it was very nice to have met you. Good night, Dylan. Maybe I'll see you again. Ribiata, Raizi for the mom. No, I don't mean that. I mean back to Russia. We have no choice. Can't you see that? It's so hard for me to understand. I mean, I'm so used to that kind of thinking. Just as you are used to your ways, so am I to my own. We have had a wonderful moment together. Something I shall never forget. No one can take that away from us. a chance we'll ever see each other again. Perhaps. This world is so big. It's so small in so many ways. That's a bad blue. What does that mean? It means I love you. Tanya, the Russian coach was in Ernie's looking for her. Yeah, she's in here. You better get her out. Thanks, Bill. Mrs. Nottingham. All right, send him in. Dean Rutherford. Professor Justin. Mr. Hart, I have spent the entire morning on the telephone with the Russian legation. I'm sorry, sir. You have violated certain agreements and there have been repercussions. You've placed Professor Justin and Professor Kingsfield in an extremely vulnerable position. I can only repeat, sir, I am sorry. You don't expect me to be satisfied with that, do you? What have we done that is so terrible? You have broken the rules not once, but twice. I'm sorry, I have no choice but to suspend you from classes for a month. Yes, sir. What about Tanya? She's subject to Russian discipline. Well, what does that mean? Well, as I understand it, the young lady's being sent home. And kicked off the team? But it was my fault. I was the one who... And furthermore, you're not to see the young lady again. Now, that's all. The matter's closed. D. 
Dean Rutherford, don't you think times have changed? Come on, Mark, I know all about the new morality and it's fine with me. But teaching shouldn't change, discipline shouldn't change. Look at Kingsfield. He runs his class exactly as he did 25 years ago. Kingsfield is unique. <laughs> Do you know how many times I've stood in front of this desk and had my hide peeled off? Now you're putting that young man in the same position. I had no choice, Mark. I knocked, but... Sorry, come on in. So, how'd the meeting with Rutherford and Justin go? Uh, been suspended from classes for a month, and they're sending Tanya home. They don't fool around, do they? see her again. I love her and I have got to see her again. You can't, Hart. Being suspended is one thing, but taking the chance of getting kicked out of school? This whole mess is affecting your work, the study group. You're starting to sound like Belle. James, that isn't it at all. Anderson, Logan, even Belle. We're all going to make it, with or without your share of the work. We just want you to be there with us when we do. No, oh, thanks for it. Stoite! Хорошо. А, прямо спина. Хорошо. Are you all right? I'm being punished. They're sending me home. Yeah, I heard. What is the matter with everybody? I have disobeyed. In my country, they tell us what to do. We have to obey. Well, you and I don't have to do it that way. It is useless, Art. Tanya, I'm telling you, I'm not going to let them send you home. I can do nothing. Well, I'll think of something. Shh, shh. Vasily sees you here, okay? Okay, I'm going, I'm going. I got a phone call for you from Justin about 15 minutes ago. Thanks, Bill. What's he want to talk to you about? Maybe he's not done chewing me out. Hey, but he wants to see you in the classroom. I'm 
sorry if I kept you waiting, sir. I just got your message. No problem. You know, Mr. Hart, this chair right here was mine. Gave me a great angle on Kingsfield. I could always see when his bow tie was crooked, and somehow that made me feel pretty good. As though somehow the perfect teacher had a flaw. But then he could see me, too. And when he called on me, somehow that crooked bow tie didn't help a bit. You think we've been too tough on you, right? Yes. And Tanya. Would Kingsfield have done anything different? I can't say, sir. Sure you can. He's tough. Single-minded, dedicated. Law and rules, those are the only things he lives by. Agreed? That's the way it looks, sir. Mm-hmm. I used to see it that way, too, Mr. Hart. But you know, standing here, I can't help thinking there's something more. And how did we all survive? Why didn't we crack? Somehow, he knew just how far to go. He knew when to crack the whip, and he knew when to ease up on the reins. Perhaps we have overreacted, Mr. Hart. I'm sorry for that. I'm going to ask Dean Rutherford to ease off a bit. What about Tanya, sir? Sorry, there's nothing I can do. That's out of my hands. Well, thank you, sir, but that's not good enough for me. Well, Kingsville, what do I do now? Thank you for coming, Nikolai. I'm sorry I'm late. I took the liberty of ordering for you. Oh, good. Thank you. I need it. You seem to be a very busy man. <sighs> Mending fences. Oh, Nikolai, this whole business with Mr. Hart and your young ladies has turned out very badly. Indeed. And you knew I felt from the very beginning. Well, it takes an intelligent man to recognize defeat. Now, what can we do to fix it? I'm sorry. I'm sure it is out of my hands. Nikolai, you can't destroy the career of a young lady just because of some little romance. Unfortunately, our state is often impersonal. I was afraid you'd say that. I was late, Nikolai, because I had been on the telephone with a friend of mine. He's an editor for a wire service. I planted the seed of a story about a young couple from different backgrounds who fall in love, but because of the political differences between their two countries. You told him? No details. Just the idea. He loved it. He's dying for me to call him back. Mark, this is black me. Nikolai, I am not Kingsfield. I'll do anything. <laughs> You are a delightful, devious man. Are you sure you have no Russian blood? <laughs> Come in. Are you all right? Look, I don't want any company right now. Aren't you've got to snap out of this. You can't go on blaming yourself. It's not going to do any good, anyway. The Russian team is leaving first thing tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Hart, there's a phone call for you from Justin. Hello? Hello, Professor Justin. I see him. Sir, I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you, sir. 
Dean Rutherford's lifted my suspension. Oh, good. <laughs> it seems the Russians back down. The Russians are pretty stubborn. I wonder what happened. Ah, oh, politics, Bell, politics. Does that mean you'll get to see her again? Uh, no. Uh, they wouldn't go that far. <sighs> seems the Russian rules will bend. They won't break. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your visit, Nikolai. Oh, it was a bit more stimulating than I had anticipated. that your team is still um, intact. Our state has decided not to interfere in a private life of one of our citizens. So, until we meet again, my friend, give my best regard to Charles. Now, of course, Nikolai. Das Vidanya. Jesus. 